Hello, Decluttering Club. We have a special treat for you today. I am here with two of my decluttering coaches, Joanne Reeder and Linda B. And we are going to be talking today about rethinking your space, which is something that is so helpful at freeing up space when you're decluttering. And I promise you, you're probably going to get all kinds of aha moments during this uh, during this video that you had not thought. And this is like one of, I think this is like one of the secret weapons of decluttering. And you think I, my house is small. I don't have enough room. Listen to this talk. And I promise you, you will find things that you can probably let go of, right? But I'm getting ahead of myself here. Uh, and by the way, if you know someone who could use this talk, give it, give them a shout out, tag them, maybe share out this video um, so that they can see it too. All right, but without further ado, um, Joanne Reeder is a professional organizer and also professional decluttering coach. Joanne, introduce yourself, tell us where you're from. Give us okay. kind of Great. Uh, my name is Joanne Reeder. I am I live in Southern Ontario, Canada here. I started my decluttering journey in February of 2002. Yes, that was 20 years ago. Uh, as some of you, my decluttering nerd friends here, it became a passion, you know, you just can't stop it. And in 2015, I opened up my own home organizing business, which uh, in the summer of 2020 is when I could not work in homes because of the pandemic and Sarah Mueller, I saw one of her Facebook ads for the Organize Like a Boss Challenge that she holds a few times a year. And I thought, I've got to give this a try. It just sounded so interesting. I took the challenge. I loved her principles so much that I joined her membership group. And then when she offered, well, Sarah, when you started offering the declutter coach training, I was in the first group. I just knew that this was going to be magical the transforming of everyone's homes and lives and i wanted to be part of it yes and i love it. i love the 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 marriage of professional organizing and decluttering right because so mm -hmm. often like an organizer doesn't have that background so you bring both of those to the table which is, is so wonderful for your clients mm -hmm. i love it and and really without the decluttering there is no organizing that will be sustained that i fully believe that yes mm -hmm. oh. Knowledge bomb right there. Check that one off. All right. So good. All right. Linda V. Linda V. Tell us about yourself. You're, you're, you have the heat on right now. It's summer and the heat is on in on the West Coast. Yes. I'm thinking I'm going to change these glasses because I'm fogging up and I can't see you guys. So. Oh, dear. <laughs> there we go. Yay. Hi, my name is Linda V. And I am in the Seattle Tacoma area in Washington State where we have different weather every single day day of the year and not particularly <laughs> within the proper season. Um, I have been one of those people my entire life that was searching for who I really was. Was I, was I the person who didn't really care or was I the person that cared when it came to clutter and how my home was? And I found over a while that I was happiest when I did care. And I think I cared all along. It's just I couldn't um, I couldn't be consistent. I, my house looked fine if you came over, but don't open that door. Don't open that drawer. Um, and then I think it was over three years ago that I found Sarah's group and everything just started to click with me. It was like it had all been in me. And Sarah found a way with her principles and everything that she does that it just all started to click and come together. Well, it made me so happy I wanted more. And so I did um, want to share this with other people. I have such a passion about it now. And um, not only did I take her um, decluttering coach training, I also just recently got my time management certification because there is one thing that I found about um, decluttering is if you can't make the time or find the time to do it, it does none of it really matters. So um, right now I'm I'm just loving helping people one on one and in group calls and and my site and page and i'm just having so much fun with it just watching people discover how they can improve their homes and i learn from them i'm still learning from sarah i learned from all the other coaches so for me it's just a really exciting time in my life to be in involved in all of this great change and this learning continually happening 
Oh so. my gosh, that's so good. I love it. I love, I, I mean, time management for sure. <laughs> For sure. I mean, if you struggle with the things in your house, you probably struggle with the with the commitments in your life and with all the things that you want to do. I know that our community in particular, they just want to do so many things, right? They 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 have so many things that they're in love with and interested in. And so that you can help people figure out how to make that work is is fabulous. I love it. So good. All right. But today we're talking about rethinking your space. So, and we've been talking about this a little bit beforehand, but um Maybe both of you could give me your your definite like what does it mean to rethink your space and why should we do this when uh, when we are approaching our homes and looking at you know places to declutter? What does it mean? Okay, for me, there's a lot of meanings, but one that something that I strive for when I first started my decluttering journey is you know it sounds a little bit crazy and unbelievable, but I wanted my home to run effortlessly and easily. And I was coming from that, you know, the wall clutter of shame, which most of us, that's where we start. That's why we're here. And I had worked on the decluttering. And then the next step, you know, when we declutter, it's like an onion, you peel back the first layer and it's really tough and hard, right? And you literally do cry when you're cutting an onion, just like we do when we're decluttering at the start. But you yeah, keep I going- I guess we do, don't we? <laughs> yeah, there's lots of tears too. You keep going through the layers and it keeps getting sweeter and sweeter. And one of the other steps, so it was, I now wanted to be in control of my stuff, not the stuff controlling me and my emotions. So it was looking at things differently. You know, I had gotten to a good point, but there was still kind of what I call a little bit annoying, like maybe getting dressed in the morning, just from where I had the stuff, right? You know, my clothes, and then, you know, you've got your socks and your underwear over here. It was good, but it could have been better. It just didn't seem to flow in sync. And why? Because when I first moved into the home, you know, there's a dresser there. Okay, bottom two drawers, this goes here, this goes here. I was crossing back and forth at the room. Oh, I switched that. Um, a few other things like most of us are cleaning supplies. Have you ever thought about switching them from where they are to another place? If it is easier to get at, you don't have to be pulling things, you know, from in front of that closet, you know, if you have storage in front of there, if it's easier to get at your cleaning supplies, it's going to be easier and quicker for you to clean. You know, oh it might, God. maybe <laughs> you're fighting with something right now for five minutes to get it out of the closet. Then that's five minutes off your cleaning time and you're already kind of cranky and frustrated before you even stop. Yeah. So like, instead of telling yourself, I should just I should just deal with it. Like maybe we could just fix it and make it a little easier. And then we might actually not mind cleaning quite so much. Yeah. At least that particular and, task. Yeah. And then, you know, and then you just, uh, and Sarah, you're famous for saying, um, ask your brain questions because it'll come up with answers. So what is the quickest, smartest, fastest way for me to do this? Mm -hmm. Is one thing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and when we talk about the kitchen, um, you know, the pots and pans drawer, and there's the old smash lanch, crash a lanch, which I call, you know, it, you're going for a pot or pan, and it's just all you hear is smash crash, right? So that isn't working for you. You know, it could be effortless and easy to get your pots and pans out. Is it maybe it the fact is that you don't need to declutter anymore, but maybe they could go someplace else they could find another home, which is scary if it's always been there. And, you know, trust me, the first week, if you try it someplace else, the first week you're going to go to your old pots and pans store, give it a week, see how that works. Uh, when I go into clients' homes, you know, in their kitchens, first thing I ask is, okay, you know, I look around at, they all have sections. Why is this here? Why is this there? And most people say, hey, we moved in and you know, when you're moving, it's crazy time. That was the one cupboard that they fit in. Mm -hmm. Okay, so maybe they just now you threw them in the cupboard and kept going. Like they, they didn't actually going. think about it very long. Yeah, and you know the plan is okay. I'll get to that next month or next year. No, no, we never have time to do that if it's already there. You know, mm -hmm. and perhaps at that time when you moved in, maybe it was twenty years ago, you had huge pots and pans that that was the only area it would fit in. You might have smaller now. You maybe even have less. If you like, if you have a new set of pots and pans, ah, they might be able to go 
underneath the stove. Think about these different real ideas. Mm, that's good. That's so good. So Linda, you have a coffee pot story. Am I right? Oh, yes. Do I have stories? So, <laughs> um, coffee pot story. Yeah. Um, you know, we sometimes, you know, it's really easy to get the obvious when it comes to knowing what to declutter. I mean, if I open up my, my drawer and I have like four serving spoons and I know even at Thanksgiving, I only use three. Okay, obvious choice there, you declutter. But some things are sneakier than that. So if let's say you have a coffee pot, you're the only one in your home that drinks coffee, the coffee pot is for you. And let's say over time, you've noticed that the coffee is starting to upset your stomach a little bit, your body's changing, all of, all of ours do. <laughs> and then you start drinking less of it. Well, what can happen is you can not realize when the, that pot that you made was the very last pot you're going to make. Because maybe eventually you decided it's not worth what you go through when you drink any of the coffee. So you just gradually stop drinking coffee. But there's no sign that pops up in front of your face that says, hey, this is the last time you're going to need this coffee pot. You have an opportunity for more space on your countertop now. Let's get rid of it. Or at least if we think we want to keep it for guests, let's give it better uh, positioning. Let's not use prime real estate on top of our kitchen counter to store a coffee pot for guests. I am going through something like that right now with my guest bedroom. I just realized I used to have a lot of guests. I don't have a lot of guests anymore. Mm -hmm. Guess what bed is coming out of that room so I have room for other things. I mean, we don't, I don't, too bad there's not an app that just has a, everything in your house on it and it pops up and it says, you haven't used this for 342 days. Do you want to keep it? You know, yep. I mean, it would be wonderful, wouldn't it? But sometimes we just have to sit and think. Have we had any lifestyle changes? Do we have, um, maybe have we retired? So now we don't need the, the uh, power suits anymore and the heels. Um, are we empty nesters now? And maybe we can um, do something with that space, that room or whatever that the kids had. Uh, do we have ability or mobility issues? I'm still trying to tuck my 76 year old husband out of his roller skates. I mean, come on. <laughs> That's a different question, though, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. The but roller you, skates. Yeah. yeah. But your interests also change as well. I mean, mm -hmm. you're not interested in the same things, but those are things you have to sit and really think about sometimes because you become blind to them, like that coffee pot that's always sat on the counter. I'll share with you a little thing I did one day that I was, I'm just, I fell into it by accident. It was amazing. I was thinking about what had changed in my life and I decided to read the last 10 years worth of Christmas newsletters I wrote and put in Christmas cards. What a journey and what an eye opener because you know when I do the Christmas letters I would put in there what kind of activities we did, what kind of travel we did, what we were doing and I realized things have changed dramatically. And when you realize those changes have happened, it helps you think about what you're holding space for in your house that you're never going to use again. Yeah, that's such a good point. Like, and of course we're changing. Like we, we want to be changing, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we don't want to get older. Maybe we don't want our bodies to, to <laughs> protest when we do things that we used to do with ease. But at the same time, like, like how boring if you're still you know, going on the same exact vacations that you did 10 years ago. Like, I think like we want to be doing new things as well as enjoying the old. So, um, so it makes sense. But if you're not looking out for those opportunities then you just, you, you keep all the luggage and you keep the roller skates and, and the coffee pot and you miss out on the opportunity to have room for new stuff. I finally gave up the surfboard. I, I grew, part of my childhood, I grew up in uh, Florida. So I always carried the surfboard every place I moved. And you know what? Since I got rid of it, I my mental state is so much better because I used to look at that surfboard. And the first thing that would come to my mind is I can't use it anymore. I'm too old. Mm -hmm. I'm this, I'm that. And without realizing it, that surfboard was 
speaking negatively to me. Mm -hmm. And so not only did I free up space in the garage, I freed up space in my brain, letting oh. that go. Yeah, that's good. So do you miss it at all? Like a little bit? No. I have a picture of it. <laughs> you have a picture. <laughs> Lovely. And memories, right? Yeah. 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 Oh, that's good. That's good. What else? Like, how, how would you suggest someone go about this? Like, if they're like, okay, this sounds pretty good, but where, you know, where do I start? Um, like, how, how do you suggest people like start looking to apply this idea in their homes? It, yeah, baby <laughs> steps. And, baby and steps. also just, you know, as I said before, if there is something, maybe just a little bit of annoying that, you know, look in your kitchen shelves um, and for example things like you've probably started on your decluttering journey and you've gotten rid of you know quite a few things now let's if you're a baker wouldn't it be kind of nice to have all your baking supplies in one cupboard because perhaps what's happened when your kitchen cupboards are really full on all the drawers and something new comes home one goes in this cupboard some baking things one goes over here then we can't find it so that's when we buy duplicates and and whatnot but how about rethinking okay i'm a baker which section in my kitchen would i like to be able to go to and have it effortless and easy and at my fingertips when i go baking what would need to move what space do i need that helps um and even just moving on you know that your Tupperware, because that's the big bulky stuff. Mm -hmm. What if it moved out of that drawer or cupboard that it's been in there for 10, 15, 20 years, you know, but just because it's always been there doesn't mean it has to live there. That could move. I have a salad spinner story. You know, I said, I've been on my decluttering journey since 2020. I finally went down first couple of years. I only need one salad spinner right? They're big, they're bulky, they don't stay on the shelf too well. I'd always kept it with my pots and pans store, which had been totally decluttered, but still to get at it, I had to move a few things. And then two or three years ago, my stepson unloaded the dishwasher one night. Now he's pretty good with everything goes, and he does know we do the like with like principle. He put my salad spinner up in another cupboard with my big Tupperware bowls. It never fell over. It was like a game changer, just what I thought I could, you know, I'm a professional organizer. I, my game couldn't get any better in my own home. One thing made a big change. Change everything. I love yeah. it. I love it. It's like that little annoyance. That's you know, really like, we could just like look out for when, when was I last annoyed? Or just like, that can be a trigger and be like, oh, maybe I could fix that. I have yeah, a different like, salad spinner story. This one's really funny. I used to have one, just one, didn't have more than one, but at once in the blue moon, I would take it out and use it, but I hated dealing with it. And I hated the fact that it had one purpose, took up so much room and basically, yeah, it was a little drier, but I could just pat it with towels and be done with it. The extra step, I, I didn't eat enough salads because of this thing. The extra step of knowing I would have to take that down and use it, then clean it put it back up. I avoided making salads. Since I got rid of my salad spinner, I eat more salads because I don't have to deal with it. Yeah, so. it's that little annoyance. It's almost like if, if you, every time you're gonna go up the stairs, there was a brick there and you kept stubbing your toe, that's annoying. So there's all these little toe stubbing things that we don't even realize because we've been doing it for so long. Mm -hmm. If you quit stubbing your toe, <clears throat> Right. It's easy and effortless. And you're like, this is amazing. I can walk up the stairs and, and not stub my toe. I can make salad again. You know, like, and it sounds so silly, right? It's like, come on. Is it really that big a deal? But I think it is. I think it's it does the matter. Other things that add up. A couple other toe stubbers in kitchens. And, and I think, Linda, you had spoken about this. And I just did it. Uh, we moved into this home in January. And I think it was March. I was redoing my kitchen. My George Foreman grow which i had loved 15 years ago we make all sorts of neat sandwiches hot dogs it's barely been used so i thought okay i'm not ready to get rid of it i'm going to put it in the basement with my serving platters and if in six months i don't make a grilled cheese sandwich and you know another question is what else can i use if i want to make a grilled cheese sandwich well we have two pants that's how my mom used to make grilled cheese sandwiches <laughs> it works right pretty well <laughs> it works pretty well the george 
And honestly, it did go in there, but I do have to say this last weekend, my grandsons were here and hubby's like, they want grilled cheese. Do you still have the George Foreman? I brought it up. They hated the grilled cheese sandwiches. It, it can stay down there this year. I'll make a decision at Christmas time whether or not I'm going to heat that. Another big one, how about that knife block? Because when we wipe our kitchen counters, like anything on your kitchen counter, when you wipe it, you know, you push it aside to get the crumbs. Do you really need it? I think it was within the last year, year and a half ago, I put my knife block in a cupboard for six months. There was only two knives that we used out of that knife block. It was a cheap one. I'm sure everybody has it. That was a game changer. Made my kitchen counters every day easier to clean. You know what? That's such a good point. Like we think we want it convenient. We want the knives right there. We want the, we don't want the George Foreman grill in the basement. I'm going to forget about it, but we forget that it's so inconvenient to work around those things. So like, spending two minutes getting the salad spinner out of the, you know, the up high cupboard saves us a hundred minutes, you know, not working around it. Absolutely. And you add those up with all these little toe stubbing stuff that we have. <laughs> I mean, they don't have to go, they just have to go someplace else. And like Linda said, mm -hmm. the prime real estate, <clears throat> I would rather walk down the stairs twice a year than daily yes. live with that fight there absolutely and we can talk about clothes too like if if it's rare for you like in my household that we have a big event you know like a wedding where you're really really dressed up i've got a couple little fancy purses and a few little pairs of rhinestone earrings none of that goes with my everyday purses or, or jewelry the jewelry goes in the little clutch purse and that hangs off the hangers with my long dress hmm. So I'm not, cause I might only easy. wear this once every three years. Uh, I don't have to look for anything. So it's, oh, there's that hanger. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, and what you talked about earlier, as far as putting the baking things where you want to use them. I love, I, first of all, everything in my home, I wish had a home. I'm working on it. I'm pretty close, but <laughs> I think still a few stragglers. But if you decide where you want that home to be, that is such an awesome incentive to get rid of things because I decided where I wanted some things that were in my guest room that needed homes. And one of them was I had a big crate of baseball cards of my husband's that we had moved out of the room his office became. It was sitting on the guest room bed. And I said, I need to put this somewhere else. I found more baseball cards in, the clo in another closet in a spare room. And I said, okay, like with like, these have to go together. I took out, there was a suitcase there. I took out the suitcase and I put this crate right next to the rest of them. Yay. Now what happened? I decided since I have too many suitcases after I pulled that and another one out, looked at the ones that I hadn't forgot about, I had been using. So that led mm -hmm. to me decluttering suitcases, donating suitcases because I wanted to, I wanted those baseball cards here and that meant this had to go. So I love it when people say, I've decided where I want something because if there's something in the way, unless there's another really good home for it, you just may have to decide, do I really need this? Or is it just taking up that space that could be my home for this? Mm -hmm. So it's like a positive ripple effect. Yes. Right. Like sometimes you're like, okay, I can't, I have to put this away, but then I have to move this thing out. And then I have to put that over here. And now all of a sudden it's a, it's a big mess. But what you're talking about is actually like a, a productive ripple effect because you realize, oh, this can actually, this can go and wait, this can go too. And all of a sudden things are put away. Things have left the house and everything is exactly where I want it. Easy and, and effortless. Yeah. Easy and <laughs> love it. I think we should aim for everything to be easy and effortless. Yeah. And that's why also you want to home things according to how often you use them are all the easy to get in and out spaces. If I use this a lot, I don't want to cram this behind something else. Like I didn't like having to get the step stool to climb up and get the sound spinner, but I wasn't using it that often. But let's say it's something I was using a lot. That's not a good home for it. Then we need within we need to figure out our range of like when we work, what we could easily grab, what we want, where. Also, 
we really could get into, if you wanted to, into time and motion. I don't know if you guys mm-hmm. heard about time and motion studies, mm-hmm. but to be efficient and take less time, sorry, my subject there, to take less time doing these tasks, we need to think about, am I going to have to walk all the way across the room and then back again to say, chop these vegetables because I have the cutting board over there and I have the knives over here. We really want to look at placement in our homes and that will help the maintenance that will help when we're using the items because we're not wasting effort where we know that, okay, it's, it's in this place because I know I wouldn't keep it anywhere but the kitchen because that's where I use it. And I don't waste a lot of time and energy running back and forth in my kitchen because all the things I use together are fairly close together. So looking at that time and motion aspect is another, when you're thinking about where to home something, that's an excellent thing to think about. If I need more toilet paper when I'm in the bathroom, I don't want to have to go downstairs (laughs) and across the house to the other side. I mean, yeah, (laughs) Mm -hmm. that's such a, yeah, absolutely. And I think also, um, you know, what's easy, we easy is a feeling. Right. So, you know, someone might be like, it's way too hard to go, you know, wherever and get this, this thing out, but you could also just decide, oh, it's so easy. It's right there. Just round the corner. You know, it's 10 steps away. Like what's easy is, is not like objective, right? We get to decide what's easy and what's not. And so, you know, someone could, could decide, well, that's just not easy at all sounds like a lot of work. Whereas you could be like, no, it's actually super easy because the rest of the life is easy, right? Like a little, a little time up front, Mm -hmm. right? Figuring out where things seem to go. Like that's an investment, but it makes what comes next so much easier Mm -hmm. and and every day they after. And that Mm -hmm. changes over time too. Because I notice as I age, I don't like to have to climb for things. I didn't think twice about jumping up on a stepladder and grabbing something. Now Mm -hmm. I'm like, can't afford to break a bone, be careful. You know, it's just not before you just did it without thought. Um, mm-hmm. So again, just reevaluating your space and say, you know, I realize I haven't changed this in 20 years. It's, is it time to change it? Mm-hmm. And it's re-loving your kitchen again, like to rebuild on what Linda was saying earlier about, you know, instead of walking across the room, if you're cooking to get things, if you think, you know, your home is your restaurant, you are feeding and nurturing your family and if you were a chef in a professional restaurant they would have hired some organizer or logistics person to have the knives here to have the pots and pans here so you can just stand in one spot really with maybe taking two steps everything is there sure some kind of a weird spice you might have to walk for but if you come from it is i am the chef in my home and this is my restaurant and I take pride in the food that I serve. And I'm not going to, I can make it easier for me. Yeah, you know, we hear that saying, um, organized people are just too lazy to look for things. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> it is so true. It's just like, no, I'm too lazy to walk across that room three times a day when I can just open a door or even use my hip to shut a drawer. Like that's mm-hmm. when a kitchen works for me. Yeah, is it lazy or is it efficient? Right? Effortless and exactly. efficient. Could be, and easy. could be efficient. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. It really helps your routines flow when you have that type of order. And it doesn't happen overnight. I mean, it just little bits and little tweaks um, every once in a while. And eventually, before you know it, you've got something running much more smoothly than it was before. And it really, you know, I think we don't need to be putting a lot of pressure on ourselves to say we have to have this perfect home. We have to have this perfect bedroom, this perfect kitchen. But what we should, I believe, in my humble opinion, we should always be striving for little improvements. I want to just improve this little thing right here. And it's not going to cause me stress. It's not going to cause me overwhelmed, but over time it's going to make a big difference. And if I don't do that one little thing over time, I'm not going to have a more positive surroundings. So don't wait for these big clusters of time that never show up. Take those little bitty bits of time. 
I um, refer to it as the ponding of the raindrops. You know, you've got a raindrop, it's not going to do too much good. But if you collect those raindrops in a tub, you can you can go for a swim. I mean, I love that. so ponding of the raindrops, just taking those one little thing here, one little thing there until eventually you look up one day and you say, you know what, this is all right. Oh, that's such a great analogy. I love that one. That's good. So those little like baby them. steps, they just add up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even, you know, another uh, toe stubber annoying is if you find yourself when you're trying to get ready to go out the door and we call that the bathroom explosion, how can this be better? You know, and a lot of it is maybe it's your everyday toiletries and whatnot that can be separated from maybe if it's just seasonal or or dramatic evening wear you know stop the things on your bathroom counter if you can declutter to the point where most items are contained under not on your bathroom counter so much easier to clean one swipe you know some of us we really don't have the space in the bathroom but if you do stop the toe stubs mm. And there's another opportunity. You find that blue sparkle eyeshadow, you know you're never going to wear again. Toss it. <laughs> no to more blue it. sparkles. Yeah, yeah, not to mention it's probably so old it would give you pink eye. But yeah, so there's there's always those opportunities. Whenever we make any changes, those are great times to say, "Hey, I don't use this. Let's get let's, let's let it go." So good, so good. All right, rethinking your space. So everyone. Take a look around, see what, where are you stubbing your toe? Where are the little annoyances and see what can you fix, right? And try that out. Now we have some links where you can reach out if you wanna reach out and connect with Joanne or Linda, we have links that are gonna be going along with this video. So if you need some help, right? If you need some one-on-one -on -one help, um, Linda, I know you do groups and one-on-one. -on -one. Joanne, you're mainly one-on-one -on -one right now. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, so definitely go sign up, connect with, with these amazing coaches. Um, they will help you figure this out and um, do not underestimate what it can be like when you make these little changes, how they can really change your entire life for the better. Like, I just, I love the work that you are doing, ladies, you're amazing. Um, you know, I love you so much. Thank you so much for being here. It was so good to have you. Thank, Thank you for, for having us. us. Awesome. All right, take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.